The Battle of Telamon was fought in the year 225 BC and took place in the Tuscany region of Italy. Following Roman incursions into their territory, a number of Gallic tribes formed their lions and planned a march on Rome. The invasion began well. At Fusile, a Roman army was defeated and the town plundered. In response, a Roman army was sent to confront the invaders. To avoid this, the Gallic forces decided to withdraw and began heading north pursued by Roman forces. But another Roman army, just landed from Sardinia, was marching south to Rome and towards the fleeing Gauls, and all three armies would eventually meet just outside the town of Telamon. The combined numbers of the two Roman armies was about 60,000. The army from Sardinia, led by Attilius Regulus, had 25,000 soldiers and around 2,000 cavalry. And Aemilius Pappus, who was training the Gauls, had around 30,000 soldiers and 3,000 cavalry. The Gallic forces, consisting of multiple tribes, numbered around 50,000 soldiers with 20,000 cavalry. The Gauls also had some chariots. After learning of the approaching Gallic army and its Roman pursuers, Attilius immediately set his forces into a battle formation and ordered them to the path that the Gauls must take. Attilius himself raced ahead with a group of cavalry to occupy a hill close by. When the Gauls reached this point, they mistakenly assumed that the Roman forces at the top of the hill were from the pursuing army that had got around their flank. Gallic infantry and cavalry were sent to clear the hill. Shortly after this deployment, the Gauls learnt these Romans were not from the chasing army, but from another advancing army. To meet both threats, they deployed their soldiers so that some were facing the advancing Romans and others would oppose the pursuing Romans. The battle on the hill was still being fought, and when the consul Attilus was killed, the Gallic forces appeared to have the advantage. The Roman army that had been following the Gauls had just arrived on the battlefield, and seeing that support was needed on the hill, Pappus sent forward his cavalry to assist the struggling Romans. The supply of extra forces was enough to overpower the Gauls, and finally the high ground was taken. The two Roman armies now started to advance on their opponents. The Gallic forces had almost no armour and fought only with a sword and shield. So when the Roman forces began throwing javelins at them, the Gauls had no defence. With hundreds being killed, some of the Gauls facing Pappus' army began to race towards them to fight them head on. But against better equipped opposition, they were soon killed without inflicting any significant damage. When the supply of javelins had finally run out, both Roman armies moved to attack the Gauls. At close quarters, the Romans, armed with lighter swords and bigger shields, held the advantage, but the Gallic forces had fierce determination, and for a while both sides were evenly matched. Seeing an opportunity for a decisive move, the Roman cavalry that had earlier won the hill made another attack, racing down from the summit and smashing straight into the Gallic flanks. This charge killed large numbers and caused confusion in their lines. With the addition of the cavalry and being attacked on both sides, there was little option for retreat, and the Romans were able to destroy or capture what was left of the Gallic opposition. At the end of the battle, the Roman forces had lost about 10,000 soldiers, but the Gauls had suffered losses of over 40,000. This was a victory for the Romans. After this encounter, Rome began capturing other Gallic strongholds in northern Italy and expanding Roman territory. The conflict between Roman and Gauls would resume a few years later during the Second Punic War, when Gallic tribes joined forces with Hannibal's army and tried yet again to invade Rome.